What's up everyone, my name is Soren Iverson and I'm a product designer at Cash App. Today, I'm gonna to show you how I design website grids in Figma for mobile, desktop, and tablet. Before we start creating the grids, let's review a couple of important terms. Three main ones I want to go over today are columns, gutters, and margins. You can see here that the columns are shown in red, the gutters are shown in blue, and the margins are shown in green. Columns are the area in which content is typically placed on a website. You can see here that the subheader and cards, both on mobile and tablet views, all fit within the columns that are set, either on an eight column grid or a four column grid. Gutters typically act as a space between columns that helps separate and differentiate content. In this case, we've got a four column grid that's flush with either side of the screen, and the gutters are 16 pixels wide. Below that, we have a tablet view with an eight point grid with gutters that are 24 pixels wide. Last, we wanna to touch on margins. Margins are the space between content on the left and right edges of the screen. So this is a mobile breakpoint where there's only 16 pixels of margins, but theoretically, if we stretch this to be a lot wider and this was a fixed content view, then these green areas would get much larger. You can customize the grid that you use based on both the product or website type that you're working on and the devices that you're working with. If you want to learn more, there's a link in the description that goes to Material Design's website where you can view all of the information on this page. I'll be basing the grids that I create in this video off of Material Design's guidance. Let's start with desktop. First, I'm going to hit the F key and I'm going to go over to the right side of my screen where I'm able to pick from a desktop preset. I'm going to select the desktop option, which is 1440 pixels wide and 1024 pixels high. After creating this frame, I'm going to click on the plus icon in the section titled Layout Grid. From here, I'm going to click on the grid icon and I'm going to go to the drop down and switch it from grids to columns. I'm going to change the grid count from 5 to 12. I'm going to change this to a blue and I'm going to reduce the opacity from 10 to 8%. I'm going to change the column type from stretch to center and I'm going to give them a width of 80 pixels and I'm going to give them an 8 pixel gutter versus 20. The reason I'm doing this is to show you what it would look like if I did a fixed width grid system. So in this case, it's 1440 pixels wide. If I make this wider, you can see that the grids don't scale up as I change the screen width. On the other hand, if I change this to stretch and made the margin 200 pixels, then what would happen is as I stretch this, the columns would get larger or smaller. Google's guidance is that you shouldn't have a body wider than 1040 pixels, so I'm going to keep the type here as center with the fixed width of 80 pixels. If you want to do a variable width grid, you can feel free to change it back to stretch. Okay, now that we have that set up, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna click on the four dot icon here Click on the plus icon to create a new grid style, and I'm going to call this desktop. I'll create that style, and then you can see, let's say I make a new board here, it's a different size, I can select layout grid again, I'll easily be able to apply the desktop grids. Now that we have that set up, let's move on to tablet. I'm going to again hit the F key, I'm going to go down here to the tablet drop down, and I'm going to choose the iPad mini, which is 744 pixels wide and 1,133 pixels tall. Let's give 40 pixels of space in between these two artboards. And now what I'm going to do is I'm again going to hit the plus icon for layout grid. I'm going to switch it from a grid view to a column view. I'm gonna use the same color that I was using in the other grids here. And again, reduce the opacity there a little bit. Instead of there being five columns here, I'm gonna change this to eight. I'm gonna keep the type as stretch, but I'm gonna have 32 pixels of margin. That means that on the left and right side here, there's 32 pixels of spacing, and let's reduce the gutter to eight pixels. All right, now that we've got that all set up, let's again click on this four dot icon, and we're gonna create something that we're gonna call tablet. You'll notice here, if we scale this up, it changes size because this is a variable width versus fixed width grid system. Now let's move on to mobile. I close this drop down. I click on a phone. There are a bunch of different options here. You can see that newer phones like the iPhone 14 or the iPhone 14 Plus are anywhere from 390 to 430 pixels wide, and they're much taller as well. However, a lot of people are still using smaller devices like an Android Small, an Android Large, or an iPhone SE, which is closer to 320 pixels wide and anywhere from 600 to 800 pixels high. Rather than designing for both of those, what we're gonna do is go somewhere in the middle. In my case, I'm going to use an iPhone 11 Pro slash an iPhone X, and that's 375 pixels wide and 812 pixels tall. Now what we're going to do is we're gonna create another layout grid. We're going to again click on layout grid settings, switch this to columns, 
change the color here, we're going to make this a four column grid rather than a five column grid. Reduce the opacity here. We'll keep this type as stretch. We'll set the margin to 16. Note that you could change this to whatever you want, but if you set it something like 24 or even 32, you're gonna have less and less room to design things on the page and more and more white space on either side. So let's take this back to 16 pixels and we'll reduce the gutter to eight pixels. Now that we've got that all set up, I'm going to hit the four dot icon. I'm gonna hit the plus again to create a new style and we'll call this mobile. I'm gonna create the style. And now if I create a new frame, I'm very easily able to go to my layout grid styles and I can pick a desktop, a tablet, or a mobile grid style depending on what I need. Thanks so much for watching. I hope that you have a better understanding of how to use grid systems when designing websites. If you haven't already, please like, comment, and subscribe. I'm Soren, and I'll see you in the next video.